This episode looks at one type of period end adjustment, adjusting for prepaid expenses. Recall there are four types of adjustments that need to be made at the end of each accounting period. The first of those are prepaid expenses or assets that have been used up during the period. The best way to see how this adjustment works is to just look at a few examples. During 2019, ABC Company purchased $9,720 of supplies. The company recorded the purchase as supplies. On December 31st, a count of the supplies indicated that $8,670 are currently on hand. Because the company purchased $9,720 of this asset during the year, and at the end of the year, they only have $8,670 on hand. That means that the difference between these supplies that were purchased and the supplies on hand at the end of the accounting period were used up. As companies use their assets, they are incurring an expense, the cost of using those assets to help earn the revenues. Thus, we need to adjust supplies to reflect the cost of the supplies that were used. As supplies were used, the asset becomes an expense, supplies expense. So what we're seeing down here in the T accounts is the purchase supplies increase the asset account to $9,720. The end of the year, they need a balance of $8,670 in the account to reflect the actual supplies that are on hand. Thus, we need to decrease the account, the difference between the amount that was available and the amount that is currently available. Or $1,050 of supplies were used. So we need to decrease supplies with a credit and record that $1,050 as an expense, supplies expense. So our journal entry at the end of the period will be to debit supply expense for $1,050 and credit supplies for $1,050. This adjusting entry is prepared and entered into the general journal. Another expense that we need to look at is prepaid expenses of depreciation. When a company purchases property planter equipment, they are purchasing assets that they intend to hold on to for the long term. Essentially what they are doing is prepaying the future cost of using property, plant, or equipment to earn revenue. Thus, when they purchase the asset, it is recorded as an asset in the general ledger. As that asset is used in operations over its life, the cost of the asset is used and needs to be recorded as an expense. That expense is called depreciation expense. In accounting, we think of depreciation expense not as a loss in value of the asset, as is often thought of in general terms. Instead, in accounting, depreciation is thought of as the cost of long-term assets as they are used to help earn revenues. So for example, if on January 1st of 2019, ABC purchases equipment, and pays $62,000 in cash. They estimate that equipment will have a five-year useful life, and ABC expects to sell the equipment at the end of its life for $2,000 cash. The company calculates $12,000 of the asset's value is used up during the year 2019. The way they came up with this number is through the use of different depreciation calculation formulas, which will be examined at a later time. For now, we're going to assume that they calculated the amount of depreciation for the year of $12,000. Thus, to record the depreciation expense or the amount of that equipment's value that was used up is going to be a debit to depreciation expense for $12,000. But the only difference between long-term assets and current assets, such as the example for supplies we just examined, 
is that generally accepted accounting principles tell us not to directly reduce the long-term asset account as it is used up. Instead, generally accepted accounting principles tell us to keep track of how much of the asset's cost was used up by using a contra asset account. So we use an account called accumulated depreciation. This account is a contra asset account and it is credited for $12,000. Now this is the first time you've heard of a contra account and we use contra accounts throughout the accounting system. And there are two general rules with contra accounts. The first is that contra accounts have a balance opposite of any account they're tied to. So if I tell you that accumulated depreciation for equipment is tied to depreciated to the long-term asset account, you will know that since the asset account has a debit balance, accumulated depreciation will have the opposite or a credit balance. So contra asset accounts have credit balances. The other rule of contra accounts is that they are tied to an account. Kind of think of it as a dog on a leash. Wherever the account goes, its dog on a leash goes with it. So wherever equipment account is reported, its contra account is also reported right along with it. So if we were to look at the balance sheet for the end of 2019 for ABC, after it recorded its adjusting entry for the equipment's depreciation for the year, we would see that their balance sheet would report the equipment at its original cost of $62,000, along with its accumulated depreciation balance of $12,000. Thus, they are reporting a book value or how much future value remains for that equipment as of December 31st of 2019. To calculate an asset's book value, it's the difference between its original cost and its accumulated depreciation or its contra asset account balance. 